then in a few other wonderful things. I come out of my dream world, disappointment. But what's my point? My point is, my self-awareness can actually be inside of a thought of my own making and can actually take on the conditions and the laws of that thought so realistically that I actually believe I can fly. In an odd way then, analogously, just purely analogously, we could kind of say this, and this is really an analogy, it's very crude, but you could kind of say something like this, use the word like with analogies. Say something like this. Well, we could say then that the son's self-consciousness entered into the thought, quote-unquote, of creation, subjecting itself to the thought of creation, while it still is utilizing fully its own uh, 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 infinite power source in its divine nature. So we could actually then say that that self-consciousness could be in the divine, it could be utilizing the divine nature and also subjecting itself to the conditions of a finite human nature simultaneously, much like I can be aware as I'm waking out of my dream, you know, I'm dreaming. And my self-consciousness is aware of both states simultaneously. I'm not saying Christ is doing this, but I'm just saying, hey, it's possible. Now, here's the key thought. If that's the case, then why, why would the Son have entered into a thought, a finite thought of, of, of creation and subjected himself not only to the finite strictures of that thought, but also subjected himself to suffering and then death, an ignominious death on a cross? Why, why would the second self-consciousness making an uh, unconditional use of the one infinite power source, why would that self-consciousness subject himself to that with, by the way, the Father's blessing through the Holy Spirit? Why? Why would... There's only one explanation. And the only explanation is love. The only explanation is gift of self. The only explanation is that the Son the second self-conscious with the Father's blessing because it's the Father's gift of self too, through the Holy Spirit because it's the Spirit's gift of self too. It, it, literally, through this triune act of gift of self of love, became our condition, our finite condition, subjected Himself to our condition. Why? For a perfect act of empathy. For a perfect ability to at least make himself and therefore make the entire Trinity accessible, literally accessible, permeable to every human being to put himself on our level so that he might be completely accessible as mediator, so that he might be completely accessible as the beloved one of the Father, literally to make us beloveds in his own image, redeemed into the Father, to take us up as mediator, to take us up into the fullness of the triune life. He wants this to be a perfect act of empathy. He wants this to be a perfect gift of self. And not a perfect gift of self in words. A perfect gift of self in action. A perfect gift of self in a concrete manifestation in history. A perfect gift of self that makes himself completely accessible to every human being because he loves us. The only possible explanation that he loves us. A perfect gift of self because he wants a perfect empathy with us. Pure to peer as it were, so that we might see right into his eyes and see that belovedness, know our belovedness, and trust him in faith into that belovedness, right into the Trinitarian life, which the Father and he and the Spirit want to open up to us perfectly. In other words, there is only one possible explanation for why in the world that second self-consciousness making an infinite or making an unconditional use of an unrestricted power and unrestricted intelligence but he would ever want to come into this created world of finitude to subject himself to suffering and death. There's only one reason. Because he loved us so. Because he was Emmanuel. He was God with us. Because God loved the world so much 
that he sent his only begotten son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that people through belief might be saved by him. If you believe that, then you will see the continuity of everything that we have talked about in this series. You will see without qualification in this series that it was, as it were, this absolute simplicity that we proved. It was this pure acting power that we proved. It was this pure acting power which was an absolute simplicity which could only be one which turned out to be these perfect unities of perfect intelligibility, of perfect mind itself, perfect empathy or perfect love itself, there it is. Perfect goodness and perfect justice itself, there it is. Perfect majesty and awe and beauty itself, there it is. There, there in the very nature of God, for thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. And Emmanuel, the Son, the Son with us, the Son with us is the way that it all becomes possible. Thank you so very much for being part of this series with me. I look forward to being with you next year.